are referring to the young man that has the way untimely that Sam likes to use for as pets and for sympathy. Uh, so this is what this conversation is about. That is the point that his mother actually met his girlfriend's mother. I mean, they knew each other from being dropped off at, you know, each other's houses and stuff like that. But the friendship, right. there was never yeah. even a 10 minute conversation between Jessica and his girlfriend's mother until after he died. So what I know is that Jessica had a hard time dealing with the death of her child. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, she was she put on anxiety. Shit. Yeah, I mean, she was like put on anxiety. Pills and she, she lost her she, shit. So this part of the story, I just want you guys to understand Arabia cannot or chooses not to speak or call Sam by her name because Sam went out and got an EPO on Arabia and lied to the courts. She told the courts that her and Arabia were lovers, so she should be granted a an abuse from a partner or something like that. And she was granted that based on a lie, kind of like how she tried to do the same thing with DC Media Girl with the EPO. But it might get a little bit confusing since Arabia doesn't uh, refer to Sam by her name. I just wanted to let you guys know that. And I will try to break it down as much as I can along the way through this video. She she wasn't herself for right. a few years. Well, and and but, during that time, during the time she wasn't herself, she was befriended and taken advantage of. And um, there's only, I mean, her son's only been dead six years. That's it. So the six year whether or not that can we say whether or not Arabia that um due to the car wreck that happened. And there was probably a lawsuit and a big amount of money settlement coming through. I just think that has something to do with it also. I so this part right here, they are talking about Jalen or Jaden that Sam likes to refer to as her, one of her sons. Um, that's what they're talking about, that story, how Sam grifted everybody about this poor kid that suddenly passed away untimely and how the mom found out what Sam was saying online about the situation. She wasn't happy about it. So if you listen more, they're gonna give a lot more details. So we're on the same page. I think it did in the ongoing of, you know, keeping this woman around mm -hmm. as a friend. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but initially, in the very beginning, no, because nobody knew that there was right. going to be any type, you know, no, nobody uh -huh. knew that. Mm -hmm. But once that was uncovered and found out, um, oh, yeah, you know, it, it, it came with benefit. Right. Mm -hmm. So but so, the six years that his mother and his ex-girlfriend's mother were friends, that friendship was developed after that child's death. Exactly. She didn't even know her prior to her son being killed. This in is wow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read so his. I'm gonna read Julian. So the kid that passed away suddenly, his name was Julian. He is date Sam's daughter. That's how Sam Sam I got to know this kid because he was fourteen, around the same age as Sam's daughter. And they were dating as preteens. His mother's comment that was six days ago, which when she saw this video, it's on the video that we just watched where Sam claimed that that was her son. And she said, 
I'm not sure what this is all about, but let me clear something up that has me sick to my stomach. Julian David Parmalee is my son, born January the 23rd, 2000, and died in a car accident in St. Paul, North Carolina on November the 28th, 2014. He was the boyfriend of Sam's daughter for a year or two. She did not raise my child at any point in his short 14 years of life. Everyone who knew him loved him, and he was a wonderful young man. It sickens me to know that she has collected money um, oh from you in his name and that she has been claiming him as her own child. Um, so that was the thing that she left. And then I guess she pop we've been seeing that she popped out of nowhere and started, you know, communicating with um, with this woman that we're talking about, Telfer. And um, and she is hot to trot because she's pissed off. Now, why? She, uh, yeah. Going through all that, nobody had talked about that boy until you None. brought it all up. You are exploiting him. And yep. I do not understand why you went that far as to put all those tweets out tying me to him. It's the same thing that you have done time and time again trying to use him for attention. You loved the way that, that the attention that you got when you claimed this. He had a mother. It was not you. He was the boyfriend of Sam's daughter for a year or two. She did not raise my child at any point in his short 14 years of life. Everyone who knew him loved him, and he was a wonderful young man. It sickens me to know that she has collected money um, oh my God. from you in his name and that she has been claiming him as her own child. Um, I put that part in back again because I want you guys to understand the gravity of how sick Sam Tuffler truly is. That's why I let that replay, that little snippet replay again. So moving on to the different section of the video. Uh, since Sam went and got this emergency EPO by lying to the courts and saying that her and Arabia were lovers and blah, 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 blah. She was granted that, even though it's a lie. During this live stream that we're um, rebroadcasting right now, Sam saw all these three ladies on panel together, live streaming, called the cops, and Arabia had to step off and deal with the cops, and this is part of the story. You don't need to play play again, damn. That's what I'm saying. Those were kind of the questions. He did, he did tell me that if they got another call, yes, they would come back because they have to. There is a restraining order. Yeah. And, um, but they actually, they themselves have to believe that I'm violating that order before they can arrest me for any type of violations. Right, and right. They know that themselves and if they actually witness, and I actually went through and showed him what I was doing, I told him what I was saying, I showed him the order, and mm -hmm. he said, you know, like, he said the same thing I said. It's a court case that involved you, and you absolutely do have a right to speak on it. So, um, you know, why are people yeah. following people around the internet on platforms? So, you guys understand this. Sam called the cops on Arabia because she wanted Arabia to shut up. She weaponizes the cause to her own benefits to get what she wants. Kind of like what she did with DC Media Girl with her APO. She thought that would shut DC up with the upcoming court case. It didn't work then. I don't understand how she thinks it was going to work for her now platforms that they know that they are not well liked in. Yep. Yeah, is it, why are you even watching? Don't um, understand why you watch. You're trying to watch and get something. Exactly. It's Ugh. so strange. Truth be told, I know there's some criminal summons out there that a certain somebody has not been served yet. And, you know, I could spend my time sending the police over there uh, mm -hmm. to get that accomplished. But it, it's you know, and and to, be, mm -hmm. to to make it perfectly clear, um, she knows her personal being is not in any danger because um, you're on the internet in your home, right? So she's trying to enforce 
you not yeah. talking about her. Sam, that is the yeah. weakest that you that's the weakest you thing you've done. You guys cannot yet. address her directly while I'm Yeah, don't on. address her. Okay. You well then then answer okay, what what questions do we have left, sweetie? Because I the ones that we have um, some crimes don't have a statute of limitations, it's that and the other. And it is a very general consensus that after a certain amount of time passes that you are completely home safe with no possible prosecutions ever, because what you think the statute of limitations means is not exactly what the statute of limitations mean. OK, um, so let me explain that first and foremost, and then it'll be easier <laughs> to understand all of the yes, other things. Yes, girl, lock and load, lock and load, Philly girl. OK, so so, up. Put your let me explain, up. Put up. <laughs> let me explain what the statute of limitations, why it's even a thing. A statute of limitation. Now, I know if you Google it, it'll say it's all about a defendant's right. You know what that last part that she was talking about. We'll we'll circle back to that um, that boy's mother. What she was talking about is the fact that Sam stole thirty seven thousand dollars or thereabouts from yeah. Aspen Dental where she worked. What right. she would routinely do is tell people that if they would pay cash on whatever it is that they need to have done. She could apply this discount and this discount and this discount. And so she says, and I can get it down to where you pay me 300 today and, and 300 next time or something like that. And um, that's what she did for people that were paying cash. The reason that she um, didn't get caught was because of just a fluke. It was just a fluke that they didn't have enough to get her. But what Arabia just explained to you, connect those two things together and you'll kind of understand why she was explaining that. Right. Exactly. Um, yes. So that was everybody <laughs> lock and load, put your guns up. Yeah. Cause they're coming um, for us. They're circling, circling it back. Like I said, you know, I, I don't know why she brought it up. All right, so this part they're referring to Sam taking over 43 or 30 some, whatever the amount, thousand dollars from Aspen Dental, um, technically it's a federal crime, crime, so technically there's no statute of limitation. Right now, Sam might think she's sitting pretty, but really she is not. This is what they're referring to. This part of the live stream is about how Sam, to father her crypt, actually went and got Jaden's name tattooed on her wrist. And the child's father and the child's mother were baffled by why Sam would even do that because. The son only dated the daughter. That was it. It was no, it wasn't deeper than that. They broke up. Sam is psycho. I'm sorry to tell you. They said that when, um, when she got that tattoo on her arm of his name, her daddy was like so upset and befuddled uh, at why she did uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. um, Cause she's yeah. crazy. Yeah. She liked the attention that she was getting and she went ahead and mirrored it. Um, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. She did. And then so, she found out that girl was gonna get some a settlement. Yep. From the loss of that child, circumstances. And she sailed on that girl, manipulated her, struck when her uh, the most weakest part of her mm -hmm. fucking life, probably. Well, she was sedated so heavily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was so money. heavily it's sedated after that. Shit, dude. She is. There's nothing about her that's not that. You are a piece of shit all the way 360 degrees round. You're a piece of shit. Now, hey. So on this part here, I did cut out a lot of stuff because there's too many asides in the midst of the conversation. It just drove me nuts. So I just cut it out. But, uh, Arabia is going to go into details in the next clip on how and what Sam filed against her. I don't. You don't. What do okay. you have? I'm going to show you guys and I'm going to explain this to you. Okay. And what I'm going to explain to you is how this order was obtained. 
what the appeal is actually appealing and I why are you <laughs> i got one <laughs> what i have is an order of protection that was granted to another party mm -hmm. against me on the grounds that i committed dating violence oh dear okay i'll be back on in a second i'm here i'm here though can you guys see is it clear can you see what's marked let me see what they're saying it says that we were well it says dating violence and abuse oh and you guys wow. are smart but y'all want a couple no, we weren't. And that's why this is being appealed. Have you ever in 30 years been romantically involved with her? Ever? Not not even once. Not on a not drunken even. night? Not on a... Never. Nothing. Never. 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 Okay. So that's a lie. That's a complete so lie. What she, she put what she got was a domestic violence order of protection. Um, what I am appealing is the error in that record because whether you are in civil court, family court, criminal court, there is a preponderance of evidence requirement and a burden of proof requirement. Burden of proof more so applies to like criminal shit. Preponder. See? So what I did was because we all know there was never any domestic abuse in this situation because there was never yeah. a relationship of any type of intimacy never. whatsoever. Right. So what I did is I made an appeal to a higher court um on the errors of the record and what that will do now i'm not asking for them to take the no contact order away what that will do is uh it will get another hearing so that the record and the ruling of the no contact that applies to me will basically the errors can be corrected it'll be a whole new hearing where the same thing happens but the evidence will determine whether this was domestic abuse or whether this was just a situation where she needed an interpersonal restraining order. And that is what the appeal is. Um, and I'm appealing that for two reasons. I'm appealing that for two reasons. One, because the truth of the matter is there was never a relationship 